think we're going to get started pretty soon. I just feel bad for people that might have trouble tuning in or getting on. Um, I'll go over this a couple different times. If um, I didn't know if anybody that was tuning in had ever not had microblading at all or never had permanent makeup. So I ran down the hallway really quickly. Um, something that we eliminated from the pre-taped show that we're going to show you here in a few minutes is that the needles are all individually wrapped. They are from the USA. They are not from China, which is super important when you're choosing a place of where you're going. They all have expiration dates on them and they are thrown away um, after each patient use. So when we're talking about permanent makeup, this is a little hand tool that is plugged. It's a power tool. So this is actually plugged into a unit and it makes the little tip on the end oscillate up and down. And I can choose different sizes of needles. So this one would be considered a three tight, very, very tiny. If you think about um, something that they would use on babies and things like that in the ER. And that is how we can get right tiny little itty bitty line in the bottom of the lash line there. Um, so we, we pick very fine, um, natural, neutral things that we can then build on as you get used to the permanent makeup or that may be the way you always keep it. You just want it light, you want it fair, and you don't want to do anything too crazy to yourself. So I, I didn't, we did have to eliminate. What you guys are going to see in a few minutes is about 27 minutes long. It is pre-taped and it's me doing microblading on a patient who's had it in the past you'll get to see what her uh, microblading faded to, which is a really big pet peeve of mine. So many women come in with blonde hair like mine and they have old tattoos that are very gray and dark and they want me to put a beautiful blonde over top and I can't. So what we do then in that case is we send you to Dr. Parker, Dr. Lynch, Dr. Meek, anybody that could run a laser and get rid of the old ink so that we can put the pretty blonde ink in. And what a lot of people say to me is, well, Jill, why would I do that if it's just going to turn gray again and fade? And the answer to that is that mine don't do that. I take a lot of pride in the fact, this is an older tattoo. Um, my hair is super see-through and boring. Without a light little tattoo there, I don't, I'm not a very hairy person for as much hair as I have. And you really, my brows are just boring. So I put nothing on them today. I don't have a lot of makeup on for that reason just so you guys can kind of see how light and fair it is. Um, so I don't, I try not to tattoo for uh, an evening of after five. I try to tattoo to just bring your face to life a little bit um, and kind of use your own uh, brows if you have them. Um, so you're gonna see in the video how, and I did Leslie's, why she wanted them that way. And then at the end, you're gonna see some before and afters of some of the people who, um, let me show that they literally barely had no brows, like even less than mine. Um, and I'm gonna explain why we don't wanna do like a heavy feathered sort of a look on somebody like that because they don't naturally have it. And that's a lot of what you see on Instagram and things like that. So I try to non-deliberately sort of put some soft lashes on a patient so that it looks a little more natural. So again, if you're doing permanent makeup, it is a power tool liner or the old school brows, which we still can do. And they're gonna last a little longer because when you're using a tool like this, it's um, you're powdering and layering that ink in. When you're doing a hand tool such as this one, you're taking the one per patient needle that we talked about. These are ordered from the US, they are not from China, very important. Um, and you're gonna put it into this tool here and the fine little end is what we make the tiny little superficial cuts with that we're putting the ink into your skin. So when you see me doing that on the video next, um, you're gonna kind of know the differences a little bit. One is a power tool and one is by hand. So we're gonna go ahead and get started and you can certainly ask questions as you need to. Nina's here helping me, so she'll be able to help read some of those. A lot of them should be answered and then we'll do questions at the very end. The video is about 27 minutes long. First of all, I'm going to thank you for coming today. I really, really appreciate you always being around to be one of my uh, little trusted models, which is awesome. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to act like you never had permanent makeup before. And we're going to do that mainly because people, some of the people that are tuning in have never had it. They're super nervous about it and they don't want um, something to look overdone. And that was exactly the exact things that you said to me. I love my brows, I love my eyes, I love everything about my face, but I horseback ride, I'm athletic, I don't want my makeup to run down my face, 
and I want to be able to keep my nice eyebrows that I have. I'm young. So it's, I always love to keep people's eyebrows where they belong. And you and I talked about that. And yours are super awesome that you take very good care of them because you're an esthetician, right? And so what's great about it is that we can keep those brows the way that the direction that they're growing and everything, right? So we talked about way back when we did you, you were pretty young and um, we first did it. And we didn't do a lot of that mapping and all of that modeling. You have really, really great brows that we could just follow. So I always tease you and say yours are kind of cheating. But as you age, they're gonna go away, right? Yeah. So um, can you remember what some of the questions were that you had or any worries that you had when you were brand new? Anything you can tell someone that would be important for them to know? I think the, the first question was, is it going to hurt to have it done? Okay, yeah, that's a good one. You talked me through the numbing process. Right, so the numbing process is very good. So that is something we use 23-7 on top of your brows. And then we use something that's um, ophthalmically okay for the eyeliner. And they're two very different things, but they work really, really well. So would you say it was a comfortable procedure? Yeah. Yeah. I don't really get a lot of complaints, thank God. Sometimes right in the very beginning, it might hurt just a little until the numbing... Tiny bit pinchy, if mm -hmm. I remember. Yeah. It gets in the skin, but then you're fine. So some of the ones that we can use when your skin is open is, is really, really great. So um, I send you home with the appropriate things that you need to take care of it. Did you find it was difficult? Not at all. Okay. Very easy. How did you heal? Scabbing? No scabbing. No scabbing. That's because you took care of it properly. Follow the directions. Yep. So you need to do all those things, and it makes a big difference. It'll give you more longevity, okay? So one of the other things that we want to talk about is the fact that the last time we did your brows was quite a bit ago. So um, the photographers are going to get some really good pictures to show people in a little bit of how that ink faded. It's a very big pet peeve of mine. I love that yours have faded more to a natural tone and you have beautiful dark hair. So in theory, you would think that a dark color would go to that weird gray, something would be off, and for you, it is not. I can put a beautiful brown over top and your brows are going to be great. Your eyeliner has also not faded to gray. It still is a very nice color. It's not a seafoam green. Sometimes these colors tend to really absorb in the body very weird. So I'm very particular about the ink I use, and I've used it for more than 20 years, and I think people are really happy with that. So that's something that I take a lot of pride in. So anything else you can think that we might want to tell someone that's new that we don't want to miss? I think we can... Not really. I think that's really it. Pain and everything as we went step by step. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to go back to the fact that it's really today, right? And you are coming back. Um, we're going to do a little bit of letting you hold the mirror. We're going to talk about the placement of your brows. Um, you had said something to me that when they are kind of coming down a little bit in this area, yeah. you feel like you've got a little spot missing there. Just a little hollow right there. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to work on that. We're going to work on that peak. Nobody ever wants to lose the beautiful rooftop. And then some of this little bit on the side and definitely some there in the front. Right. So the other thing that we're very careful with, especially with me, is that we don't make a big giant squared off check mark. Mm -hmm. Those things don't stay um, in style. So if you want to do that some night, you've got a giant after five event and you really want to rock the brows and do big hair and all of that, Powder you can do it. Yep. And then it washes off. So that's something that I'm really particular about. Um, yours are super even, which is really wonderful. You're still very young, so you're still cheating. But as we age, usually one of our ocular areas wants to tip a little bit. And when that happens, we're going to need to see the physicians, um, the physician assistants, things like that for Botox to keep our eyes where we want them to be. We don't really want to continue to change the shape of the brow and the width of the brow with a bunch of mapping and keep making it thicker and thicker and thicker because at some point one side is going to be thicker than the other. So that's another thing that I kind of uh, vary from with other artists is I try to make sure that they're for your face. Everybody's eyebrows don't look the same. We're going to see some more photos as they come through this webinar a little bit which will be really good for people to see some patients have none and we can play with that a little bit but keeping your eyebrows where god put them is the best thing to do and if you want a facelift later in life your brows are going to be where a surgeon would have to work with them anyway right yep. so that's been the easiest so we're going to work on those areas you don't like another thing that i love to do with my patients is i give you a mirror throughout so we're going to be able to see this as we're treating you in a few minutes. Um, we wipe the ink away after it's underneath um, the, or the, 
the plastic and we know then where the ink is, how it's looking, and you can really make some determinations on your own. I love to use your guys' opinion because you know the way that you want to look and you know what bugs you. So if those little things are gone, then we know we're on the right track. Um, and then how has the eyeliner been? I know you like it thinner to the nose. Yes, a yes. little thicker on the outer, yep. right? And yep. um, do you want that changed at all? I feel like I it's it's just kind of faded. A little of the color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. faded a little bit, and then just in general, I just don't see it anymore. Okay, and I can't remember, forgive me, did we do the bottom? I can't remember. No, we we only have done the tops, okay. Yep. And you can always just kind of, you know, you can change that if you want. Some people like the bottom to be like a lash enhancement, where we're almost like dotting along the bottom of those lash line. Um, for you, you love concentrating on the top, which I think is beautiful. It opens your eyes so nicely. Yeah. Um, your color was black orchid, so it's like a purple black, and a lot of people hear the word purple and they think, oh, you know. No. Purple um, adds that little bit of blue so that we don't get the graying effect of black. Right. So I don't typically even buy black. Sometimes on African-American patients, I might use it on their brows mm -hmm. or like the salt and pepper ladies that have the very super dark in their hair as well as white. The, true black that can even want to go charcoalish, mahogany kind of thing. It really does well on that very fair, dark, grade kind of patient. And for you, you, don't, you wouldn't want that. So um, you have the beautiful brown eyes. I think that color stayed really well for you. So how many times have we done you now? I can't even remember. Will this be three maybe over the years? This be the third time. Okay, so super happy you've done it, yes. Yeah. Okay, anything you want to say to anyone or what you wish you could get in about microblading or eyeliner or I think my being back speaks for itself okay that I mean this is the third time and yeah I love it every time I tell all my friends I tell my clients yeah and um, I appreciate you know, that thank you you've seen them too so yes I have I've been very lucky from you I know <laughs> thank you I really appreciate it you're a little bird out there singing away That's right. yeah which is great so it's just yeah. good to have people happy about it you don't sweat it makeup off with you doing horseback riding and being hot very yoga, busy, hot yoga, yeah. snowboarding, yeah, you're a, old, mm -hmm. all the weather. Everything does really well. All right, well, let's get started, okay? Okay. okay so we're just gonna start by cleaning, making sure the area is all prepared to be numbed. Again, up top here, we're gonna do some 23-7 as before. Numbing time typically takes about 20 to 30 minutes can get started on the eye faster because we have the numbing eye drops and that numbs the mucous membrane of the eye. Little dots of the, you remember these stain just a smidgen. I know, sorry, scared you. Zap. It just <laughs> scares you when it touches your eye. Um, I know, I'm sorry, you're jumping, huh, there. So on the eye brow area, we're gonna go do a little bit of this 23-7. We're gonna get it worked in there really well gonna let it sit nice for you and it'll start to take effect pretty quickly we also can keep it activated by rubbing it a little bit this way it kind of lets us cheat to make it work a little faster Leslie and I spoke about the color she'd like to go a little darker now that she's braver and has had this done before um, she knows that it can fade and she knows that she wants it to last a little longer. So she's asked me to pick a little bit of a darker shade this time. Her body and her face can support that because she has beautiful dark hair and dark brows. And so it will just blend very nicely into her skin. One thing I do wanna show you is when you take a look underneath here, you don't see all that dark old ink. It's a little pink, it's a little bit red but there's no dark, old, gray ink. You see her nice skin tone. So when I want to go in there with a nice dark shade and follow the direction of this hair growth, it's just going to look like she has more brows. They're going to be more defined, and you're not going to have a big, dark, heavy area that you have to work with. It's very, very important. All right, so here we're going to put this is what we use on the eye to numb there and we're going to have it sit a little bit and we are probably going to get started with the eyes first. Like I said previously, Leslie and I have spoke about the fact that the front of her brows go up. She has very small little brows here in the front so we're going to do the strokes tiny as though they are mimicking her own brows.
We're going to try to keep going the direction of the hair growth that she has naturally. Here you can see some of these top hairs want to grow down a little. So we're going in between those naturally softly. This is an area that she always has to wear powder once her brows fade. And one of the main reasons she had originally wanted the microblading several years back. So we're just going to kind of follow the natural shape of the brow. We're going to make sure that everything falls into place with all of the natural hairs as much as possible. This actual pattern I don't do on every single person. Easier to do on someone who has nothing. Um, sometimes your brows just don't have this natural down and up fashion. Um, you can try to build them that way, you can make them that way, but sometimes they look a little more unnatural to a patient who doesn't actually already have it. Leslie's very lucky that she has um, this actual growth pattern. Some people have a much finer, thinner one. Others have a curly one with almost a colic that might you might see sometimes when someone's getting their hair done. We're going to grab a little more um, numbing now because her skin is open and we're gonna run it across, which is gonna make the second pass much more comfortable for her. So again, you know, we are using a darker shade, we're using a very fine blade, and we're just softly going in between these brows to try to give her a little bit more definition and volume. She's gonna need to wear Vaseline for the next two weeks round the clock to keep it nice and moist. You want um, a Vaseline sort of mimics itself like a little tiny band-aid over top. And that way we know that there's not going to be any scabbing, any flaking of the color. It's going to heal nice and even. Um, you do wear Bacitracin off of the, the very first two days. So you'll use it. She'll have a dose tonight, this evening, and tomorrow morning. The time of day that we're doing this is around 11 o'clock in the afternoon, so she'll leave with her Bacitracin on, and then she'll apply one dose tonight before bed, Vaseline all the other times in between, because we don't want it to dry out after we've applied the Bacitracin. We want to keep it nice and wet, like a little liquid Band-Aid over top of this, letting it heal nicely. That's what's going to prevent the flaking. Because this is all done by hand, it's extremely intricately fine in top of the skin, much different than the old tattoos were years back. These don't tend to be as powdered and layered in as deep. They're definitely um, precisely put in a nice small little area. So now what I do is I paint a bunch of the ink on. I'm going to leave this one set. Sometimes I don't do this right away if your brows aren't as even. Leslie's, again, are extremely even. Um, she is an esthetician. She's taken care of them for years and years and years. So her brows are kind of like cheating. But when they're done, they're really, really beautiful. And she loves that she doesn't have to do as much to them on a daily basis. So sometimes I leave this one just sort of bladed so I can look back and forth. But I already know her pattern is quite even. How are your eyes feeling, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're gonna do the same thing. Her little chin's gonna tilt towards me. Again, you're seeing these brows sort of swept up until they sort of get to this area. They're growing down. Here they're growing up. So you get some of that feathering that sometimes you see on Instagram and things like that. Leslie has this natural, so it doesn't look like somebody drew some strange feather on her face because her body already has this shape and we can just naturally make it look better and like she has more so that's a really important thing you not the the shape of the feather isn't always um, supposed to be duplicated and replicated over and over and over if the patient doesn't have that on their face sometimes it just looks very unnatural you might find that if you have tiny soft little strokes that are a little more undeliberate um, sort of just naturally in a shape that you can come up with, not so feathery. I think it looks much better on a patient who doesn't naturally have this down of the brow. 
not everyone has it. So now we're going to put a nice thick layer of color and numbing and it's going to sit for 10 or 15 minutes underneath her plastic wrap and then I'm going to start on the eyes. I think your own body sort of needs to coagulate some of that ink down in. The cells will sort of crawl over top, hold that ink in, and the saran wrap does really well for me because the blood comes up, the ink goes in, and I feel like it gives people more longevity of their color. So at the very end of the treatment, I leave that on quite long to really let your body absorb it in as much as you can. Um, our bodies are always trying to eliminate things, so sometimes when we get permanent makeup, your body's trying to fight it. Here you're gonna see Leslie's old liner. It is not green, it's not gray, it's not strange. It just needs to be beautifully enhanced again. Um, she likes it again a little thicker on the outer part, so Leslie, we're just gonna start very lightly, nothing crazy, and I know it'll hurt just a little because we haven't had as much time to numb as we should have. I apologize again, you're being awesome for me. So we're gonna follow that very little spot there along the edge of the lash line just to kind of get it started and open. The clear that's in the jar next to the ink is the numbing. It does work really, really well once we can get that into the skin. So I'm just sort of skimming along the top with a tiny little bit to kind of somewhat get this started. And then we're going to go ahead and start depositing more of the color. I also like to tell patients to tattoo from the very beginning eyelash, not all the way down to the tear duct here. So we try to go to the very last eyelash to the very last eyelash. I think it looks the most natural. And again, if you want to do the big heavy duty after five makeup some evening, you can certainly do that. Put it right over top and um, it'll look beautiful. So you can make it thicker, darker, wider for an after five evening, but on a regular day when she's out doing her snowboarding, her horses and all of those things, she doesn't have an overdone makeup look. So now we're just gonna gently wipe this away. We're gonna take a peek and we're gonna see how she's doing. Taking a little bit of this numbing on a Q-tip again to run it across. It's gonna keep making everything comfortable and this same numbing is mixed in with this brown underneath of her plastic so that it's going to be pushing the numbing in the entire time I'm back here working on the liner. We're gonna try to do another soft little pass. Again, we're just gonna go along the lash line. Most of the time during these procedures, I do have people open their eyes partway through and tell me how is it, do we want it darker, thicker, wider, anything like that. Um, you will be back in four to six weeks for a touch-up that's included in your initial visit. Most people tend to want something just a little bit darker or they think it's you know perfect, they don't want to do anything. I still encourage you to have your touch-up because it's a little bit more ink being deposited into the skin one more time to give it that nice longevity that everyone wants to have, <clears throat> sorry, have with this procedure. You wanna make sure that even if you think the touch-up is perfect, I still, I try to have people come back. They say, oh, you know, I love it so much. I don't wanna change it. It won't necessarily change it, but what it will do is just give you more longevity of that ink staying and you getting your money's worth out of laying here and going through being tattooed on your eyelid. So if you are a Latisse patient, I usually have you wait uh, a good month or so. Latisse is wonderful, but it does make your lashes very vascular. Um, it just makes the lash line area want to bruise a little bit. Um, so I typically have you hold off on using your Latisse and your eyelash growing serum about a month prior to coming in and having this done. It just will make so that your eyes don't bruise. The take home papers say that you can ice. Most people don't. Did you ice, Leslie? Okay. Um, you, basically, it's the bacitracin at night, bacitracin in the morning, and wearing your Vaseline for two solid weeks, making sure that it's as thick as it can be. Leslie also does power yoga. It's super hot in there. So she uh, makes sure that everything that she touches is clean before she touches her face. 
she puts fresh Vaseline on when she gets home or in the car um, out of the studio. We've texted about that in the past just to make sure that when you're sweating and when your face is getting wet, let's say you're taking a shower and washing your hair and some of the soap and things like that are running over top of these tattoos, it's good to have a nice thick layer of Vaseline on so that the water just goes right over top. What you're keeping it sanitary with is going to be your bacitracin in the beginning and then just not touching surfaces and touching the tattoos and always making sure that what you're putting on is brand new. Use a brand new Vaseline that I give you, a brand new bacitracin that I give you. A lot of people tend to keep Vaseline in their homes too long and we don't want to put that over top of a healing cut. So now we're going to take the plastic away for a little bit and we're going to softly wipe the brows away. And Leslie, if you want, you can pull up the mirror so we can kind of talk about where we're at, what we're thinking. If your skin is extremely dry, sometimes it's going to stick a little bit to your skin. You see me wiping pretty aggressively here. I don't really want you doing that at home because you're going to be pulling some of those tiny little hairs away. I want you to wipe as softly as you can when you're taking the Vaseline off um, and applying new. So now that that's away, I'm going to take some more of the numbing and we're going to rub it through here. Make sure we get any of the leftover ink and let that sit for a moment while I wipe the other one so she can see this one too. And this was only one pass, so we definitely are going to need to do more. But what I think is nice about it, especially for someone who does not have brows, is you see me softly changing your face throughout the whole thing so that you're not as nervous when you just sit up and you're like, oh my goodness, I have eyebrows and I didn't have any before. So I think it's great that the patient gets to talk to me about what they normally do when they're drawing their brows in or things that they're not able to do when they're drawing their brows in because someone else is doing it and it's easier for somebody else to get to your face and do things to it from a makeup standpoint that we typically can't sometimes do to ourselves. Again, we're applying more numbing. So you see even when I'm rolling this across, you're not seeing giant, big, dark, crazy hairs everywhere. There's not tons of ink. It's going to look natural and beautiful like her normal brows are. We just want to keep enhancing. So when you see Leslie, what are, what are we thinking? What's your thoughts that you're seeing that you like? I'm already not seeing that hole. Yep, I really worked on that. Yeah. That was the first thing I wanted to eliminate because that bugged you the most. Mm -hmm. So then what we can do is kind of work on some of these other ones that tend to want to just open. Yeah. Um, and they are going to look a little more pronounced now because your skin is starting to blanch. You see that white. So that means, thank goodness, that you're more numb this go around. I know you won't have to be angry with me. See, you were a little trooper. So this one could stand to be a little bit more, you know, put together like that one is. And I always notice right where you Right are in there. Now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're going to need some there. So I think we're on the right track. We might pull one or two of those. I don't know if they need it. I, I, I just wanted to. That's I okay. To do with those yet. That's okay. And we make that determination as we go along. I don't typically just start tweezing someone I, someone's eyebrows without asking and making sure that you're comfortable with what right. I'm doing. Yeah. <clears throat> Where's your little stick? Right here. Thank you. Mm hmm see that one weird yep. brow there? Okay. That's kind of been my guide. Okay. I, I would pull it if I had a line just under it, mm -hmm. but since I don't, I've been leaving it. Okay. So that's kind of where... So we'll just sort of make a few along in there too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So now that we've talked about that, we're going to tilt our chin back up towards Jill. Maybe just a little on that outer end. How, how, <clears throat> so, how are yeah. you feeling about the nose? That part I think is pretty good. No, I think that looks good. Okay. I like how it tapers really. Okay. Really well. Okay. 
than we think. Butter? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly what it needed. Okay. So we're going to be able to put some Vaseline on it, okay? We're going to wipe away the brows now, and I think we're going to be done for today. So we'll stand you up and get some beautiful after pictures of you. Again, the ink is going to look a little darker as it um, has the Vaseline on, and the blood is all the way up to the surface. So what happens over these next two weeks is you wash it as little as possible. No scrubbing, no heavy anything. Um, they do want you to kind of stay out of the gym and don't do major sweating. That's because your body's always trying to eliminate things. And when you're at the gym and you're pouring sweat, we don't want to be pulling some of the ink out of there while it's healing. So if you can go and lightly perspire versus pour sweat, I think that's better. Obviously, don't touch anything at the gym and then touch. We don't want any cooties in there and any infection. And um, just letting it heal quietly underneath the often applied Vaseline is the best. No swimming face first. No sticking your face in the shower. Letting the water beat on it while it's healing. You have to do all of that in small stages as it's healing. Okay, you can go ahead and look, honey. See what you think. Mm -hmm. Better? Oh, yeah. So we're just going to lightly go back and forth so that we're getting under the hair. Some people have had healing that got a little scabby under the Vaseline, so I just kind of want to show this. I'll probably wipe it away for her after photo. But when you see that you're going to get it under the hair, that way some people have actually put Vaseline on top of the hair, and then the healing starts underneath and they kind of scab, so you don't want to do that. Coming in for a touch-up and wanting more is always mm -hmm. fine. It's not a problem, you know? Oh, yeah. How are we feeling? Good? Yeah. Let me see you smile. <laughs> I want to see your little smile. <laughs> You're so cute. Now, we're going to go to the before and afters. Do you, you want to show me what I click on there so I don't mess anything up? So, um, you can tell as I was you know, talking to her that taking care of it is a big um, thing. And most people do a really good job. I've had a couple of people that, you know, forgot certain things or didn't do certain things and we were able to help them. But it ends up being a very big two-way street as far as me getting it in correctly, not having it overdone, and then you taking care of it as much as you can. So here again is our Leslie's before and after um, photo. That was right after she was done. So that is the darkest that she'll ever be, which is great. So um, she did decide to go with a little bit more of a brow this time. Um, and she's, you know, mentioned to me how much more she likes it. So the, uni the unique thing about this procedure is um, whether you have a bigger brow like Leslie, a very thin kind of see-through brow like myself, or some of the brows that you'll see on the next um, slides, it's really interesting that you can build and do things as you need. Um, so she did not hardly have any at all. And again, we didn't do like a crazy feathered um, back and forth kind of a um, um, version for this lady. She wanted something softer, lighter. Um, this was, I believe, healed. Um, so I think this was, you know, when you go home and you're going to wear the Vaseline right after the procedure, as you saw Leslie's, it's a little darker. You see more that you were done. I honestly, I don't get complaints about the downtime. Some people say my family didn't even know. I was so happy that they didn't know. I didn't feel funny going to work. I didn't look differently. Um, you can do the lashes or sorry, the liner and the brows at the same time. Um, and then we also have an eyebrow serum that is launching from Obaji that is really, really exciting. If you guys have tried any of the new Sil eyelash growing serum, um, they have now come out with a brow one. So this young lady didn't have as many eyebrows. They may or may not grow back depending on what the medical reasons is for her um, losing them. But what's nice is that they're not giant, they're not big, and they fit her face as nicely as we could. So now I think we'll try to go to the next one. Um, but I don't know if I see. 
Good, perfect. Okay. Um, so here's an example, nice of the mapping, okay, that we can talk about a little bit. Again, we talked about her eye, um, the ocular areas can change. It happens to every single person on the planet, no matter what you have done. I mean, plastic surgery will certainly help. But when you see some of the diagonal of the eye and where the brow is placed, and that some of her eye has sunk just a little bit, you really want to stay with as much as you can the natural shape and the, the face of a patient, I find. The, sometimes people come in and they've had some of the mapping done and they're doing all this measuring. And the problem is, is if it doesn't fade enough on one side that tends to be a little thicker or the other side that tends to be a little thinner, you really start as the years go by to get some of that variation of ink um, and it makes it quite difficult. So she could actually, if she wanted to, do a little Botox on the one side to drop one brow and do a little bit on the other to raise the brow. And at least it would be in that actual um, hair area where um, her brows belong. I did, if you can see, run along the top of the one side a little bit. She had wanted that done nicely and lightly. So we did that a little bit for her. Um, but it's as natural as it can be. It's not a big giant square, you know, stroke in the front. Most people are just really scared of that and not looking for that long term. Um, I think we have one more. So her brows are a little bit more solid. She wanted them to kind of stay that way. Um, I don't think wants to do a lot of Botox and things like that. She wanted them to be a little heavier and a little denser. She's really enjoyed them. She had um, a lot missing in the front of the one. And I think even since then, I've done a little bit more on the front of the one side, but it's, you can always see how people have a little bit of a variated of a face. Um, everybody has asymmetry. It's the way it is. It's better to sort of, I think, in my opinion, try to stay with it as much as you can and not overdo someone's face so that their brows look very drawn on and very makeup and very, they don't look like themselves. Family members tend to not end up liking it. And sometimes it's ones that stay on your face forever that tend to be over mapped. So, um, and again, we're back to Leslie's before and after, and you can also see some of the thickness of the liner and things like that, which she loves. Um, and we did now, you know, make her brows a little bit darker. So even somebody like Leslie can use the brow growth serum in the front. You can use it on the top of the area here. It will help. And the eyelash growing serum um, is really, really great. So it really makes you feel that you have makeup on even when you don't, which is so nice, but it's more natural and it's for your face. Um, so some of what we're going to do with this go around is just give you a range in pricing simply because some people want an enhancement. Some people want really dark. Some people need more of a correction. Um, and so when things like that happen, if I have to correct some things, um, things like that that have been done somewhere else or things that people just don't like, it tends to get a tiny bit more expensive. So that's why we sort of did a range in pricing. Um, the, we're going to do any of the consultations um, complimentary. Sometimes they take a $75 deposit at the front, and that's just to sort of guarantee that you're going to come um, and be here with me. So that will all go towards your procedure um, anyway. And if you decide not to do something with me, you can purchase a product or use it towards the physicians or somewhere else in the practice. You are not stuck having to um, only do microblading or permanent makeup. Um, so again, I don't know if anybody missed the beginning of the webinar, but the permanent makeup is done with the power tool. All of the needles are inside of an encased enclosure, only used on one per patient. They're all made in the USA. These are also um, individually wrapped and they're all indiv individually used per patient and thrown away at the end of the procedure. You take home all of everything that you need. So I don't know if anybody has any major questions for me or worries or anything like that. I'll have to see if I can actually see our little box at the bottom. I just don't wanna to touch anything that's gonna mess it up. Um, see what I can see here. It looks like it's pretty quiet. You kind of see where we're at here. Nope. So it looks like nobody has a lot. You guys can go to the chat box and type anything. I tried to put as much information in there as I could. Obviously, we recommend you doing a consultation. I think it's the best just to see, you know, if you're a candidate, what you think. If you do have some older ink and it's grayer and it's really bothering you, the doctors do a great job at getting rid of that. 
Um, and then we can start with a really nice color that won't turn gray anymore if you're going to have something lighter, a color like that. So, um, raised hand, so I don't know, does that mean? I'm not totally sure. There's a little chat box in the bottom if you guys can find it. And that way we can see, we're trying to look here to see if anybody else has a question. Um, you can do the, um, you can do the um, consults even via FaceTime if that makes your life easier. I know there are some people that are out of state right now um, that reached out to me that'll be home, my little snowbirds or people that live in Arizona, come back to Cleveland, things like that. So we can do it via FaceTime and then you can schedule your appointment when you are in Cleveland. So that would be fine as well. I, anything else that you guys might need, you can always email me at jillg at theparkerclinic.com. I tried to, you know, jam pack that video with as much information as I could so that you guys were able to um, have any questions answered. So I don't, I don't see a lot in the chat box. So I, I'm thinking that maybe everybody understood everything. I want to thank everybody for attending and um, any suggestions you have, obviously email me, let me know. Um, and I would love to see all of your pretty little faces um, in person because I can't see you guys here, but I see that some people were waving. So I'm just, I don't know if you guys are trying to ask a message. You got to go to the chat part and uh, type it in there. Nina's going to try to help. She's well, again, you guys can email me if for some reason we're figuring out that the chat, it says that it should be working, but if it isn't, jillg at theparkerclinic.com. Will this be online later? Here we go. Please cover lip. Oh yes, okay, I can do that. Sorry, sorry. All right, so, um, so the lip is pretty easy to do as well. Um, we can do liner, we can fill the color in. It just depends what you're really looking for. It can be done by hand as well as with the power tool. Um, usually using the power tool layers the ink in, um, it stays a little more. I'm in Willoughby every other Tuesday and everything can be done there. Yes, it can be done in Westlake as well. I guess I should have said that. Um, if you have eyelash extensions, you need to remove them. I know I wear them too. And that's like, what are you talking about? But take them off, get your tattooing done. Uh, we need the area very clean while it's healing. And sometimes lashes want to harbor some bacteria. Once you are totally done and healed, you can put your lashes on and you're ready to go. And it's like you constantly have makeup on. It's, it's lovely. Everyone absolutely loves that. Um, is there any metal in the ink? So it's not necessarily metal, but it is a tattoo. Um, are you talking maybe for MRIs and things like that? When you have those type of things, you they'll tell they'll turn the machines down a little bit. Um, it's they've changed a lot of what they do now with a lot of those things. So um, how often do you recommend microblading touch-ups? So they really, once you're done, if I do it and you come back in four to six weeks and you have it done, you really can wear it for a year or two. I don't think you need to constantly come back. I wouldn't, if you're, if you're going to places that are doing it more often, my worry is that it's not being healed properly or it's not being put in the skin deep enough that your body's metabolizing it too fast and kicking it back. Um, those are things that you want to um, think about. Um, is do if you do um, sometimes there are discounts if you do other areas. You'll have to come in and kind of see what we have, what promos we have going on. Um, yes, I believe this will be on the YouTube channel. I believe that it will be on our Parker Clinic YouTube channel to rewatch. Um, if my brows are thinning and growing lower, I must have them. Do you trim the existing brows before the procedure? I can. We talk about all of those things. Like I do different things for every one, depending on what you have, what your goals are, what you want to do. If they're brows that you need and you want to use them, we certainly don't want to mess with them. We want to leave them if they're properly in the brow line. And then again, that's kind of why I mentioned the new eyebrow growing serum. I believe that's going to be a special of ours. You can watch your emails. Um, it's showing some really, really great results. That's a new Obaji product called New Sill um, and Brow Sill. The pricing, um, the pricing is that the brand new brows or is that touch-ups as well? So um, 
you, if you're two and a half years post, you're, you're basically doing a new treatment. I'm hoping that your, you know, pigment has faded. You definitely should have gotten your money's worth out of it, I feel. So it's like Botox and filler. We want it to fade. We want to redo it. We kind of want to assess what you have now. Um, your face changes in two and a half year, years. So are we going to put it in the same place? Are we going to do something a little bit different? I, Again, it's kind of different on everyone. I wish I had a flat answer, but we can certainly go over all of those things in a um, consult. I'm glad that you got two and a half years. That's awesome. Typically, you know, a lighter shade is going to fade a little faster. A darker shade is going to hang around a little longer. Um, and you don't want to constantly do it over and over. So let's go back up and see if I missed any. Thank you. Making an appointment. That's great. Um, I have heard it can be a problem with MRI. So I do have some people that have to get um, some MRIs of scans and things like that of their head and neck and face, and they have been totally fine. Um, so I would um, give you, I can always give you all the ingredients. You can show it to your physician. If, you, if you're someone who has to have that done on a regular basis and get cleared from that doctor first and then come back and let me know, um, that's usually what we do. Um, if you have eyelash extensions, days I'm in Willoughby would be Tuesdays every other Tuesday, and I'm in Westlake every other Monday, and those are always with Dr. Parker. Um, lash extensions can be done there, um, as well as tattooing. Um, oh, it cut out a few times. I'm sorry about that. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, and can I cover lip? I hope I tried to do that. Okay. Um, will this be online later? The answer is yes, I believe so. And now I have one more new message. Had an upper bluff. Um, would it be able to have upper liner done? Yes. Yes, you are. So upper bluffs are typically done right along in here. Sometimes if you have a lower one and they're in your lash line, it can mess up the bottom eyeliner a little bit, but it can be retattooed and there's no problem. The scarring with that is usually very tiny, if any at all. Um, I worked for a surgeon for a long time. So I've treated a lot of people that have had um, different surgeries. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any other questions. I don't think there's any more. Does anybody have anything else they want me to go over? Anything we can think of? You go home with all of the information of taking care of it. You're back in four to six weeks for the touch up. Um, and, you know, it varies person to person because I just don't know what you're going to want done or what you're trying to change. So I'm not necessarily trying to be vague. I just, it, it really, I do it individually for each person. And it's not just like a, a cookie cutter and everybody gets like a signature eyebrow or something that 45 people all have the same one. I try not to do that. So that's really why I try to pay attention to each one of you and try to figure out what your, you know, your goals are. They can be done at the same time as Leslie did. I basically go back and forth. Um, you have a little bit of downtime when that plastic wrap is on anyway. So I can be working on the eyeliner at that time and it, it goes by pretty quickly. Um, so I think we are good. I'm waiting to see if anybody else has anything. I wanna thank everybody for joining. I really appreciate you guys taking time out of your day and hopefully it answered a lot of your questions. It doesn't make it so scary. I know I don't get a lot of complaints about the downtime, about the healing, about the pain. So, um, and I try the hardest to not have anything be overdone because we don't want our makeup to walk in the room before us. So I try to be as conscientious with that as I can. Um, Jill G at theparkerclinic.com for questions. Thank you. I appreciate that. Do I have before and afters of full lips? I do. I can try to find some. I just don't have them on here. Um, and I'm also looking into some of the new um, hand pieces and things like that when it comes to the lips. So they've got some new things that are coming down the pipeline that I hadn't taken the time to get to. Um, so I'm going to be looking into that. But anybody that has the lips, I've done several people with the hand tool that I showed you. They love it. Um, several of them are cleft palate. Um, surgery patients that have had um, doctors put some of the filler in to give them a better top lip and I've filled that in for them and they've just been so happy and hugged me and cried and it's lasted really well so in some ways I've thought why reinvent it but I know that there are some simple faster ways of doing the lips and I'm looking into that right now so um, that will be something new that will be coming out so I didn't want to put some of those on if I'm going to change it a little bit. Um, so that's really the answer to that one, but, um, I'll certainly talk to you, you know, on your own and things like that. And we can try to figure out what we're going to do for you. So thank you again, everyone. Anything else we can say, or we're good.
I think we're good. We're going to end the call. I really appreciate uh, you guys taking time out of your day to spend with me again. So thank you very much. And we hope to see you at any location of our Parker Skin and Aesthetic Clinics. Thank you. Bye-bye.